uh, electric vehicles. So here in the Philippines, you can buy uh, small electric vehicles um, from Chinese brands, uh, and they're like a little micro car. Um, they give you about 100, 150 miles on one charge. They're charged up at home on a normal electric uh, power point. Not very good for long runs, not very good for anything other than short journeys because all they are is a sealed up golf cart. Yeah, um, you can get uh, pedicabs which are battery charged they've got one large battery that takes about 12 hours to charge up so you have one at home and one on the bike and that will give you a full day's charge for being a pedicab um, and then you've got electric vehicles as in the mainstay <laughs> Toyota and GM and Chevrolet and uh, uh, Peugeot and all these different other mainstream brands BMW Mercedes uh, that are doing electric vehicles um, and would I buy an electric vehicle in the Philippines no I wouldn't uh, and there's this big thing about it in the world that is going to save the world and it's going to turn around and reduce emissions and everything like that and I, I get all that I get all that but do I agree with it no because there isn't an infrastructure behind it at the moment that's adequate enough to turn around and compete head-to-head -head with petrol or diesel or hybrid In Davao, there is only one electrical power charging that you can actually do, and that's at home. You have to turn around and get a stage two or a class two electrical power source to your house to charge up your electric vehicle overnight. Okay, and if you're using a uh, uh, actuating current or AC current then it turns around and it can turn around and take you 12 to 15 hours to get a full charge or you're turning around and going to travel 290 miles 300 miles and run out of charge which means you're going to have to find somewhere someone somebody to help you charge up your your vehicle to get you back to where you've come in Davao and that is a nonsense because the vehicle is supposed to be there not to do short trips the vehicle is there for you to turn around and use as a form of transportation around the city outside the city two or three hours uh, get where you are and then get you home safely you know um, Batteries on these EVs, in hot weather, they deteriorate quicker. In cold weather, they deteriorate quicker. So you've got to have this balance on the electric battery. Uh, they also, the, the vehicles weigh more. So you've got an electric vehicle, you've got no, nothing in it. Everything in it, the door, opening the door is electric, opening the fuel cell is electric, opening the charging point is electric, opening the, point, the bonnet is electric, starting it is electric. And if you don't have any power in the battery, like your mobile phone, like a forklift, like a golf cart, golf cart it don't work. It don't work. And what's the point of paying you know, $60,000 to buy an electric vehicle. The world wants you to go over to this. Yeah, you've got all of the all of these people turn around and screaming and shouting. Uh, and what I'm reading at the moment, Ford in the US making no money out of it. They're stopping production. GM stopping production. BMW reducing production. Mercedes reducing production. They're all turning around, they can't get a thousand kilometers or a fifteen hundred kilometers out of one charge which is what you can which, which is what you can get with a uh, a diesel car or you can get with a petrol car yeah 
So personally for me, there's no charging points or not enough charging points in the, in the Philippines to support a full-time electric vehicle fleet of people that want to turn around and go and get EVs. Hybrid on the other hand, you've got an electric motor and you've got a petrol motor. Uh, you've still got the problem that your EV battery in hot weather deteriorates. The EV supports your petrol engine, but what's the point of having an electric engine to support your petrol engine just to improve the range? Why don't you just turn around and get a smaller engine petrol car that will turn around and give you, you know, 90 kilometers to a litre? rather than saying it will do 50 and you don't improve the emissions on your electric you know, on your engine you're using a washing machine motor to drive a wheel or two wheels or four wheels to give you range on your hybrid uh, i still feel that petrol and diesel are the in countries like the Philippines and Malaysia and other countries that cannot afford to put in new electric, electrical systems, new electrical charge points, new supporting structure for electric vehicles. Because you need to turn around and have a charging point every 50 kilometers. So that's Digos needs power points. Davao needs power points, Tagum needs power points, Buddha needs power points. All of these towns are around Davao city need to have charging points for electric vehicles. And the electrical companies and the car makers aren't investing in that. They're investing in the car. Now they're producing a car that weighs nearly a thousand, thousand kilos more because of the battery weight than a petrol car. The choice on EVs is always luxury and everything's electric and everything's all singing and all dancing. but it doesn't give you the range. And people want to get in a car, drive from A to B, B to A, and know that they can do it, and then go into somewhere. Look how many petrol stations are on my, my road here. There are five petrol stations on here. Not one of them has a charging point. Between downtown Davao and Sasa, there are 20 petrol stations. Not one of them has a charging point. So you have to plan to drive to a charging point or look at where you're going and make sure that you can get there and get back. You can make sure you don't put on your AC which draws power from your battery because your battery will go like a mobile phone, as I just said. You have all the apps running on your mobile phone. Your mobile phone runs down. And an EV car is like a mobile phone with wheels. And there's, people are selling you this vision that it's going to save the world. It's not. It's not. There are thousands 
of companies around the world that are mining for cobalt, they're doing the lithium, they're doing the acids, they're building these batteries, which are all contrary to making a safe environment. I don't know what, I don't know what the answer is, but EV in 20 years may be there. Today, it's not. So don't start trying to sell something that isn't a viable option in countries like the Philippines, like Vietnam, like Indonesia, like India, that doesn't have the infrastructure in place to support electric vehicles. It will do in 20 years. But you're selling these cars that are twice as much as a petrol car, twice as much as a diesel car. You can take a petrol diesel, petrol car and a diesel car into any garage and the mechanics in there, after years and years and years of working on these cars, are able to fix it. They're able to get you back on the road. They're able to turn around and sort it out. With an EV car, they haven't got the technology, they haven't got the training, they haven't got the expertise to get you up, up and running. There are horror stories from around the world where somebody goes along a road and they hit a speed bump too fast in an electric vehicle, it goes up, it hits, it hits the undercarriage of the car and then all of a sudden the electric battery pack has been damaged, it's been compromised and they write the car off. You've just spent $60,000 of your money on a car and it's useless. The door panels are good, the seats are good, yeah, you can sit in it, you can pose in it, the glassware is all good, the windscreen wipers are great, the headlights are great, everything's lovely, but the battery panel and the wiring underneath has been compromised and you can't use it. Or you have a problem with your battery and you go back to the dealership and the dealership turns around and you're thinking it's going to be, oh, X amount of thousands. And all of a sudden they say, you need a new battery and it's going to be $30,000 for a new battery or 56 in the case of the Hyundai or BMW. The batteries are no longer cheap because people aren't buying these cars anymore because they've actually seen the wisdom of their ways that they're better to turn around and buy a petrol car or a diesel car or a hybrid car. Now the hybrid works on an engine plus a battery and it's got this KERS system where it takes, power, takes electricity from different moving parts and puts it back into the battery. But you've still got two moving parts. You go to a garage, the guy in the garage will know how to turn around and fix a petrol engine Look at, an, look at an electric engine, that's a different kettle of fish. That is a different technology that people will turn around and walk away from. It's a specialist job. And when, they, when you turn around and talk specialist, you're talking about money. You're talking about people that want to charge you a lot of money for doing the work. The vehicle weighs more, so the wear and tear on your tyres. So. If people are producing more rubber tyres and putting more pollutants in the air because the tyres aren't giving you 20,000 miles, they're only giving you 12, your usage on tyres and your effect on the environment, because the tyres aren't eco-friendly, the engine might be, yeah great, that's not putting out carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, but your tyres when they manufacture these rubber tyres offsets that. The manufacturing of the battery with the cobalt and the lithium and the acids and the manufacturing in these countries around the world offsets what you're saving. Now, I was reading an article in, a, in the US the other day and it turned around and said that for an electric car to turn around and be carbon neutral and to be do what it's supposed to do, it's got to do 60,000 kilometers. Okay, no problems at all. but. Battery, new batteries have to be replaced 60 to 70,000 kilometers, which means a new battery goes in to get, to get you to your 60,000, so you've got the usage of the battery. But that means that battery's got to do another 60,000 miles or kilometers to turn around and become efficient and give you a return on your battery. Well, that's nonsensical really, isn't it? Because your battery's not 
giving you a return unless it's done 60,000 you've got to replace it and put another 50,000 dollar battery in there which means every 60,000 miles that car is costing you another 60,000 and people are just going oh, I'll get rid of the car and buy another one and 45% of EV owners in the US are claiming that they would never buy an EV they'll buy a hybrid or they go back to petrol because the EVs are not delivering what they've turned around and said they were going to be delivering they're going to be cost effective effective they're going to turn around and give you effect on the environment they're going to give you a return on your investment they cost a, a lot of money they cost a lot to service the technology is not there to refuel fast yeah uh, I've watched articles in the UK where people turn up on this motorway service station and there's 15 to 20 people in the queue before them so by the time they've charged that's 15 hours because you need to around put a minimum charge of an hour on your on your battery to get you where you're going, and then when you get there, you make sure you make sure you plug it in again to make sure you get home. So your working day is going to be is going to be extended by three hours. But is that beneficial to the workforce and the environment? Not really, is it? Because you've got all these cars sitting on the road and sitting there using up electricity and you might be turning around and doing three kilowatts but majority of these cars aren't doing three kilowatts they're doing 7.5 kilowatts or eight kilowatts to get a charge the only people that are making money is the electrical companies are making money yeah the fuel companies the diesels and the petrol people of this world the prices are still floating here they're floating at 52 pesos 52 peso a litre which is a pound a litre yeah electricity here is at 11 peso a kilowatt so if you've got to do seven kilowatts 11 sevens is 77 basic math really isn't it you put 50 in to get a litre which will turn around and get you 50 to 100 mile, 100 kilometers you could turn around and do a charge which is your seven kilowatt and it's going to cost you 77 you're going to pay 17 peso more to charge your vehicle to get an hour charge does that make sense not really in my mind it doesn't make sense out there there'll be other people you'll be other people sitting there going oh it does it's really really good well you you keep up with the joneses i'll drive a petrol engine i get uh, i get 55 kilometers a liter on my scooter and uh that's more fuel efficient and it's more eco-friendly because uh, it's got an e uh, Euro 4 engine than some of the petrol cars and the diesel cars that are on the road here but electric vehicles the infrastructure is not there and it needs to sort itself out I've been reading about the upbeat about the companies around the world the big auto companies like the Fords the GM's the Toyota's the BMW's the the high undos uh, you know the Mazdas of this world and they're all turning around and saying they're withdrawing they're going to the government to turn around and ask them to turn around and say not to give them the subsidies not to give them the uh, pressure to turn around and produce EV vehicles because they've got loads of EV vehicles that have been made that are sitting there they've got electrical battery power points at the bottom but nobody wants to buy them you have to listen to the people you're trying to push water uphill and when you try to do that with people and the consumer they walk away from it people are still going to turn around and buy you know if you've got 30,000 are you going to buy a 60,000 EV vehicle or are you going to pay cash for a petrol car that you own outright and you can run and you don't have any debt and you don't have any uh, reliance on service industry you don't have to worry about where you're going to get your electric from you don't have to worry about whether you're going to go out and you're going to run out of fuel you're going to leave your sixty thousand dollar car on the side of the road until somebody can come along with a battery pack and charge it up for you just to so you can get home it's about confidence in electric vehicles and i must say i'm not confident in electric vehicles i look at them as a forklift truck a milk flow and a mobile phone
that's all they are. A forklift truck works in a small little area, runs on batteries, lifts a lot of stuff, plug it in at night and go home. Milk float, you go around, you do 200 miles a day delivering milk or delivering what you've got to turn around and do. You go back to the depot, you plug it in. A car, people want to travel. People want to get in the car, they want to go downtown, they want to go from downtown, they want to go to their friends over there, then they go from their friends over there. It's a different type of working environment. It's a leisure environment that the EV has not worked out and companies have not worked out. Design-wise, God, I think they look ugly. But that's my personal opinion. I think they look ugly. Uh, would I buy one? No, I wouldn't buy one. Wouldn't buy one. If I'm alive in another another 50 years, 20 years, 30 years, I might consider buying one. But it's a forklift truck, it's a milk float, and it's a mobile phone. They all have their limitations on their usage, and so does the electric vehicle.